grew up in Pasadena, California, where he attended Pasadena City College. Dave's first duty was attending Santa Ana Army Air Base, which is now the OC Fairgrounds and OCC. Dave and his other fellow pilots received vaccinations for tetanus and yellow fever before traveling abroad because of when, in 1940, the Rockefeller Foundation Board of Directors voted to budget half a million dollars for public health work in Europe for war conditions. Among these were tetanus and yellow fever vaccines. United States Army Air Force has established airfields in South Carolina for training pilots and air crews of United States Army air fighters and bombers. This is where Dave spent one year for his flight training. After Dave's training in South Carolina, he was sent to an air base in Chukulia, India. Dave flew a B-25 medium bomber, which is a North American B-25 Mitchell, and it is manufactured by North American Aviation and is a twin engine plane. It was used primarily in World War II, but remained in service after for about four decades. Dave was a part of the Flying Tigers. The Flying Tigers' main objective was to take down Japanese bombers. Dave's role featured flying over Japanese bases where they would bomb Japanese supply lines. Hayward, I was an airplane pilot in uh, World War II, uh, which was a long time ago. And I flew an airplane that looked like this one right down here. It's called a B-25 Mitchell medium bomber. And it, um, it was a very nice airplane to fly. And our job while I was overseas was primarily to interrupt the enemy supply lines that were uh, bringing supplies to enemy uh, military forces. So we did a lot of that kind of work, and I'm going to... This is what I looked like uh, when I was 19 years old. I had this 34 Ford V8 that I loved, and so um, along came the war. And... Dave Howard grew up in Pasadena, California, and he was 19 years old when he was enlisted to serve in World War II. A total of 16.1 million Americans served in this war. Along came the war, and everyone had to serve in one way or another. You could either enlist in something that there might be some advantage in. I always wanted to learn how to fly an airplane, so that was the advantage of going into the Air Force. Uh, and if you didn't enlist in something, they would come along and draft you and probably put you in something you didn't want to be in. Yeah. These were the barracks we lived in, and there was no pavement over there, just a lot of adobe mud. and. It was a lot like what we're experiencing right now. Uh, we had a lot of rain at that time. It just rained every day, it seemed like. And we marched in the mud, and there we were marching. And then up on this tower, there was a loudspeaker, and they'd play uh, march music, and they'd get us all stirred up. While we were <laughs> fired up and ready to go. And then another thing they did, they gave us uh, shots. Can you see this okay from where you are? They gave us shots of all kinds. and. Um, Closer. Um, the shots so of tetanus and yellow fever and cholera and everything you can imagine. And when we started flying this biplane, it was called Primary Flying School. We learned how to fly that little biplane and, and it was a lot of fun. We could do barrel rolls and loop the loops and dive <laughs> and do everything with it. It was a lot of fun. And then after six months of uh, flying even more advanced airplanes, uh, we graduated and um, got our wings. Uh, here's my wing, pilot's wings, and I had uh, second lieutenant's bars on my shoulder. And that was a great day to have finally got that far. It taught me one thing, though, there's things worth worrying about and things that are not worth worrying about. <laughs> and this was truly something worth worrying about. Yeah. So I tried to follow that. We had a year of training, and they sent us overseas to India. We went to Florida, and we went across the Caribbean into the very eastern part of South America. We crossed the South Atlantic Ocean. We landed at a small island in the middle of the South Atlantic, refueled, went over to uh, West Africa through Nigeria and on our way to India. 
we stopped at places all along. It took us about three weeks to get overseas in those days. <laughs> yeah. And so um, here, we one of the places we stopped was a place called Agra, India. Maybe you've heard of the Taj Mahal temple there in India. Oh, wow. And uh, here I am sitting. This is scaffolding on the dome of the Taj Mahal, and this is me sitting there in front of the temple. So cool. So then um, we ended up in India. This is what that country looked like. India is here, Burma is here, China is here. And we landed at a place called Karachi, which is now Pakistan. And here's Agra, where the Taj Mahal is. And our base was down here at uh, near Calcutta. And the reason that they sent us there in World War II, 43,000 planes were lost overseas, including 23,000 that were lost in combat. Millions, and um, so we sent what they call the Flying Tigers. And on this hat right here, it says Flying Tigers, 14th Air Force Association. And the Flying Tigers, they had 100 uh, fighter planes, and they went over and they proceeded to shoot down the Japanese bombers that were mercilessly bombing the Chinese civilians. Now that all happened just a few days after Pearl Harbor was attacked. Yeah. And then later on, um, they told us to move our squadron across these mountains into China. And after that, well, we, um, we did virtually the same thing, attacking supply lines all through the uh, eastern part of China and down into what is now Vietnam and then also doing sea sweeps out here to catch any barges that were bringing material down to the Japanese forces in southwest China. The squadron still holds annual reunions, and uh, this is me over here. And this last reunion we held was in New Orleans. And uh, I've been asked to go back to China several times, and uh, we're always appreciated there because of what we did setting up the airlift and shooting down all those Japanese bombers that were making such a big splash against the civilians. Yeah, I And typically we'll go back there and we'll sit around a big table with a lazy Susan in the middle and they'll have all kinds of food there. Yeah. So they really treat us nice. When the war ended, I was in Washington, D.C. and I think uh, on the very day that it did, uh, we've got all kinds of assignments. Someone sent me to fly up to Maryland on some little mission, and I don't know what it was, maybe delivering or giving a ride to somebody who had a meeting up there in Maryland. So I was flying uh, my, my job there with the Air Force in uh, Bowling Field, Washington. I did. Uh, there were three of us guys that palled around together. And we all signed up in the Air Force at the same time. We all went to primary flying school. Yeah. Uh, the other two guys, though, washed out of flying school. Uh, washing out, well, the instructor doesn't like the way you're handling it. Maybe instead of being very smooth with the controls, or you get kind of jerky like this. Or, yeah. or maybe, well, one guy claimed that he had a real bad cold and he just wasn't up to it. And I guess his flying showed it and the instructor washed him out. That guy became a bombardier in uh, Eighth Air Force and flew these B-17s over Germany. That really, they took quite a beating, but he survived it. Wow. And the third guy, um, when he washed out of flying school, uh, he transferred to the Coast Guard and was on these landing craft that were taking troops to those islands in the South Pacific. So. Yeah. All three of us served, and all three of us, by the luck of the draw, got through alive. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, the main thing that we learned was responsibility, and if a problem develops, uh, it's up to you, up to me, to do something about it. Uh, Dave received a Flying Cross Award, which is a military declaration awarded to any officer or listed member of the United States Army who demonstrates heroism or extraordinary achievement while participating in an aerial flight. 